the education program leader for the National Music Center, coming at you today from Studio Bell. A synthesizer is a musical instrument that gives you control over the flow of electricity to create a vibration. Two weeks ago, we laid out all the different parts you will find on a synthesizer. Oscillators, filters, envelopes, and more. Last week, we saw how early synthesizers gave you almost infinite ways to put these parts together, and it was a little overwhelming. And now we have the Mini Moog. Instead of leading the electricity around the instrument with patch cables, now we have no choice. It flows from here to here. With less choice comes great understandability. It's all laid out for us to see. As a musician, what excites me most about synthesizers is the control it gives you over timbre. Timbre is usually defined as the quality of sound, its tone color, its character. Most instruments are locked into a particular timbre. A piano sounds like a piano. A guitar sounds like a guitar. With this, I control exactly what it's going to sound like. So in today's video, we will use the synthesizer to craft unique sounds. See what they look like in my favorite sound visualizer, the spectrogram. And then we will give it a name based on its character. Here I have the spectrogram, which shows us the pitch of a sound. By painting a line, and then it tells us a lot about the timbre. Ah, by how many lines or overtones appear above. So my mini Moog's on, but it makes no sound because I have nothing going to my mixer. So I'm going to turn on an oscillator. In crafting my sound, the first place I'm going to give a lot of attention to is my oscillator bank. Oscillation is a fancy word for vibration. So this is very important for building our sound wave. Here I have the range of notes. The waveform will have a huge effect on the timbre of the sound. Here's my triangle wave. Here's a modified triangle wave where it kind of changes speed. Sawtooth. Sawtooth is one of the brightest timbres I can get. We see a lot of overtones in the spectrogram. My square wave, and then some variations of the square wave. That was a very bright sound, so I am going to use my filter to shape it a bit. take out some of the overtones, but I'm also going to use this envelope generator to change the filter over time. And I'm going to use this second envelope generator to change the volume over time. Okay, so I ended up with this sound. Sort of a gentle sound. I shall name it Sneaky Trumpet. Let's build another sound. This time, I'm going to use two oscillators. Let's start with them both in triangle wave. If I make the waveforms really close together, I can detune one from the other, and then I get this wah wah wah. I'm going to throw a third oscillator in. So with three oscillators, this is a much thicker sound. Tons of overtones. Filter. Let's call this one Spiky Boomerang. I can also just play with noise. You can 
really see what the filter is doing with the noise. There's another thing we can do with the third oscillator, which is turn it into something called an LFO, or a low frequency oscillator. So now my third oscillator is making the pitch go up and down, depending on how much I move this mod wheel. The LFO can also be set to control the filter. But the waveform also changes how it moves back and forth. I got a little carried away there. But for a musician, the number of sounds this can make is truly mystifying. That said, this instrument is still quite limited. You might notice I cannot play chords. I can't play more than one note at once. If I play two notes, it just picks the higher one. Also, there's no save function, so once I've turned these dials, the sound is gone. The tuning is unstable. The Mini Moog came out in 1970, so it is over 50 years old. Synthesizers have come a long way since then. But for us, we're going to leave sound synthesis for a little bit. Now let's say you find this all interesting, but you don't have access to a 50-year-old analog synthesizer. There still are ways for you to play with synthesis. There's this website I like called Blockdust. It allows you to place tones like oscillators. I can control them with my computer keyboard. Add effects like filters. You can put multiple tones together. These blocks work a lot like the bits or the modules. And just by placing a few down, you can get very complex sound. So you can play at home. I hope this was an interesting look at these amazing instruments that gave musicians millions of brand new sounds to play with. And until next time, happy exploring. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and or subscribe. Also, the National Music Center is a charity that relies on donations. So if you have the means and feel like it, please go to studiobell.ca slash donate.